Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a pleated incline. I start by turning the shirt inside out and smoothing it. Now I'm using a washable marker because I'm going to center this shirt. And what that means is I'm going to be putting the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt together for symmetry. So what you wanna do is mark out the center points of the shirt and then tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve. I like to line up the seams in the underarm and then along the shoulder. And then I find those little marks that I made and I give them a pinch and I shake it out a little bit and then I smooth it. And then I find the other little marks that I made and I line those up and I pinch them all together, shake it out, and then just start to smooth my shirt until I have it as perfect as I possibly can. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to take a washable marker and just freehand on my pattern. Now you want to pleat along this line, making that line as straight as possible. And I'd say my pleats are about an inch tall. The center of the shirt is on the right hand side of the screen and in a perfect world all of those pleats would be nice and straight because when you open your shirt up that's going to be the center line of the shirt. Now going around this bend can be a little bit tricky, so just work with it because your main focus is to keep that yellow line or whatever color you drew on nice and straight. Hopefully when you make yours, you'll get it on your first try. It took me a couple tries, but I finally got it. Don't get discouraged, just keep working with it. You'll get there. For this project, I'm securing it by using my second favorite rubber bands. They're a little bit smaller than my number one favorite rubber bands. And I got all of my rubber bands from Amazon and I have links for them down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check that out. It makes it really easy to find the supplies that you might want to use. Continue to work on your pleats and securing your project. So I have a question. How many of you like to use rubber bands versus kite string or sinew? I know sinew we use for certain projects like when we want white lines and all of that. But for me personally, I like to use rubber bands as often as possible because I find them to just be quick and easy. How about you guys?
Okay, that looks pretty good. So now using my yardstick and a washable marker, I'm going to mark out my pattern. And I'm going about every two inches. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And I've placed my shirt down inside this piece of gutter. I got it at Lowe's and it's nine or 10 feet. And then I used a Sawzall to cut it down into manageable size pieces. And it's really handy because it makes everything sort of self-contained when you need to add the ice. One thing I should tell you though about using the gutter, it's not actually muck dyeing. But in a way it kind of is because the dye can't drip through a rack and go away. So all of it puddles down on the gutter and then goes down the shirt as it's like on the incline, creating um, like a contrast color. And you'll see at the end what I'm talking about. A couple things. First of all, you should probably wear gloves when you're adding your dye because you run the risk of staining your hands. Also, turquoise is a primary color and it doesn't split. So if you're looking for splits, turquoise is probably not the best color for ice dyeing. I didn't want color splits. I actually wanted to see some bright turquoise. That's why I went with it. But turquoise is kind of no fun to work with. It's one of those sticky dyes that doesn't want to play very well. So my thoughts for this shirt were, I want a rainbow, and I also want to use colors that I don't use all the time. My red violet jar was pretty empty, but I cannot remember the last time I used red violet. And hot hibiscus is a really red hot pink, and so it's not my favorite, but it's close to fuchsia, and I was hoping for some color splits. So that was what the plan is for this shirt. I'm going really heavy with the daffodil because for those of you that follow along, you know that for me, yellow always vanishes. So I wanna have some yellow left on the shirt. And then you wanna grab a mask and give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. And then pack on your ice. It's so exciting when I add the ice. Look at that rainbow appearing right before our eyes. It's beautiful. I have found it so much easier to add the ice while it's laying flat, but now we need to create the incline. So I'm setting it on top of a smaller little container because I don't want a super steep incline on this one. So I've got the bottom of it resting on that little container and then the top of the gutter is hanging over the edge of the bin. So it's a very slight incline. And the great thing about having the gutter is it's all contained. So none of the dye is going to drip outside of that bin. It's just all going to drip down inside of the bin. If you don't have the gutters, I highly recommend you get it because it makes it so much easier. So I'm gonna set the project aside so the ice can melt. And this is what it looked like after the ice melted. Now I'm going to let it batch for 48 hours. Now it's time for the rinse out. And remember earlier how I said the gutter creates a contrast color? Look at all that pretty contrast color. It's like a, a purple, a red violet purple color. That's the part that lays flat against the gutter. It's not muck dyeing per se, but it creates muck lines. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Okay, so you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric, and then gradually increase your water up to hot, and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. 
From here, I take it to a pre-filled hot water cycle, washing machine cycle, and I use Kirillon. And I do however many cycles with the Kirillon until the hot water cycle is clear. So I just take a little cup, I scoop it up in the hot water. If it's clear, I know that I'm ready for my final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional textile um, fabric softener that brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And these Gildan shirts are so stiff and scratchy. I really like to use it on the Gildan shirts. Um, they take dye like a champ, but once I get through all my Gildan shirts, I don't think I'll be buying them again. I just don't like the way they feel. And then I take it and I put it in the dryer and then I iron it and we'll come back and see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our pleated incline ice dye after it's been washed and dried and I think it turned out beautiful. I love this shirt. It's so vibrant. Rainbows really make me happy. So throughout this tutorial, I've been talking about that contrast color that's created by using the gutter. Those are those lines that you see running horizontally. That's the part that was laying flat against the gutter. And then the part that was on top, that's where the rainbow is at. I'm trying to help you understand how the pleats work. So every pleat has a top and then a bottom and then a top and then a bottom. And when you open it, this is the look that you're going to achieve. It is really beautiful. I did not use any green or orange, but when you use primary colors and they mix, this is what you're going to end up with. So what do you guys think of this shirt? I love it. Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.